So I might start off that on the left hand side I want to show some uh, uh, profile information. So I can just click and drag this down to the bottom left. I can renumber what I like and choose what to show. Look, let's show my first name, my surname, my city. Uh, let's show my icon uh, and maybe, you know, hello and welcome to my portfolio. Excuse my bad time. 
If I hit save, that first widget is now up and running, I can see it there. Uh, I might choose to bring in an external feed. You know, I might have, well in this case I actually have my own blog. So how about I quickly go to the middleman blog. I'm just going to first of all grab my uh, RSS feed. I'm just going to copy the link in this case. <laughs> this is what happens. Do not do podcasts when your phone is still turned on. So now I'm going to go and paste the RSS feed here. Give it a name. So let's call it Middleman Blog. I'll show a summary. I'll show the whole thing. Look, let's show the whole thing. Hit save. And now have my Middleman Blog feed coming in. If I don't want it on the side, I want it in the middle. Well, again, you can just click and drag using Ajax. So you can see here it's very simple just to try and create a custom view. Now, I'm not going to go through each of these in depth just for time, but you can see here that the kind of widgets we can add allow for all kinds of options. I can link to files to download. I can display a folder of uh, files I may have uploaded. I can ask it to display an image so I can create a quasi image gallery. I can even link to external video. You know, in this case here, I'm going to put external video. Again, I'll just quickly cheat grab this URL here of a, a video that I've had on the blog recently and just by pasting that in it recognizes YouTube, Google Video and TeachTube Skivvy and I'm sure there'll be more coming to this over, the, over time but again I hit save and that video is now embedded so yeah it really gives a student complete control over how they want this to look and the kind of media they're going to have on it so that's the view um, as a student, of course, um, if I'm going to link to files or show images, I'm going to want a place to be able to display those. So if I go to the My Files area, I can actually go through and upload files. By default, students have a 10 meg quote. You can increase or decrease that at, at, at will. And also has a built-in search functionality. Um, separate to that, we also have built-in blogs. So rather than just being an e-portfolio tool, what we're also starting to see here is a, uh, some social networking tools. Now students can go through, they can create their own blog. You know, I can just call it my test blog. A description. This is here as a demo. Again, some tags, I'll just leave that for now. I can create a blog. And I can create as many blogs as I like. The idea that I might have different blogs for different views or for different audiences. So once the blog is there, you know, I can actually go through and actually start writing into it. And I'm actually cover that in a in a separate, uh, separate podcast. Lastly, it also has groups. Again, the social networking element of allowing students to network together. Now, look, I've created one at the moment for my students, which I'm going to put them all into. But even just as a student, students can actually go through and create their own, um, search for groups that they want to join. They can actually have invites. Uh, groups can be open or closed to invite only. They can go through and look at who their friends are. At the moment I don't have any, so I can actually maybe search for a friend. I've only got a few in here at the moment, so I can actually go through, send a message, or even if I wish, send a friend request. So we're starting to see some basic social networking tools. As I mentioned, this is all nice and easy tied into Moodle, so even though that this system is separate, um, when Moodle has its resets, this won't be affected. What I can do if I can log out, it can automatically take me straight back to the My page. So look, that really is just a very quick introduction and a quick show of some of the function of Mahara. What I'm hoping to do each week is as I'm discovering more about the system and having some of my students play with it, well I'll create more of these podcasts and show you more of this advanced functionality and, and how we're deploying it. If you have any questions, look, please do put them in the comments. Uh, we're checking those and hopefully I'll be able to answer some of the comments and questions that you post in the next uh, post on this subject in the blog. So until next time, I'll see you later.